Okay, so brand new thing for us. We're going to talk about factoring. And where we start with factoring, we start with like the most basic idea of factoring. Really, factoring polynomials by something called the GCF. Have you ever heard of the GCF before? Yeah. That stands for the greatest common factor. factor. That's right, greatest common factor. Well, like I said, for some of you, this is review. We're going to go over what it means to be the greatest common factor, what factors even are, how to distinguish a common factor, and then how to use them. So the number one thing that we got to know is when we talk about the GCF is what in the world factors mean in the first place. So when we talk about a factor or factors, Factors are these numbers so the, uh, and variables and or variables that when we multiply them together, we get a term. So when we talk about factors, it's two or more numbers that multiply together to create a term. So what that means is that most of our terms you can separate into component factors that can be multiplied together. So two or more numbers or variables that are multiplied together to create a term. One key thing I want you need to know it's multiplied though. Now, we don't add two numbers as factors create a term. We can get terms that way, but the, the addition of, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the multiplication idea. And the reason why we're talking about that is because when we factor, we're really talking about dividing. Uh, you remember this word called distribution, yes? Remember distribution is that idea of multiplying and you get rid of parentheses? Factoring is the opposite idea. It's dividing to create parentheses. We'll talk about that later. So two or more numbers or variables that are multiplied to create a term. That's a really long-winded way to explain something that, that, with an example, I think it's going to be really clear. Let's do just a couple very quick examples here. For instance, 15. Number 15 is a composite number. It's not a prime, which means it, it has some factors in there. Can you give me a factor of 15? Three. 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 Okay, now, factors always come in pairs. So if you give me three, you also give me five. Uh, that's right. So three and five are two factors <coughs> that multiply together to create 15. You guys, are you all right with the idea of, of factors? I'm not going to spend a lot more time on this, but 3 and 5 are just two examples of factors of 15. Now, what some people get a little confused on is, how in the world do we do this with, can we do it with variables? Well, the idea is, any time you can take two quantities, whether they be numbers or variables, and multiply them together, well, those things are factors. So, let me give you a for instance here, and then you'll give me another one. x to the 7, you all know how to pronounce it, yeah? Say that for me. <laughs> Perfect. If I can find two quantities, so two variables raised to another power, that when I multiply them together, they make x to the seventh, then I've found two factors. For instance, are you aware that x to the third times x to the fourth, x to the third times x to the fourth gives you x to the seventh? Are you aware of that one? Yes. Then those are two factors of x to the seventh. I want you to give me another one. So give me two sets of uh, two variables, x to whatever power you, you can think of, that would also make up x to the seventh. Because I have given you two, but there's, there's several examples we could do. Give me another one. X squared. x squared, okay, x squared and x to the fifth. Sure, as long as x squared and x to the fifth multiply together to give me x to the seventh, then those are two different factors of x to the seventh. Show fans if you feel okay with, with this so far. Left side people, are we okay with that so far? How about, um, we do one more. How about if I give x? What would the other factor have to be? Perfect, because this counts as x to the first power. So if I have x and x to the sixth, well, you know what's interesting is when we look at this, we have x, that's a factor, x to the sixth is a factor, x to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. All those powers of x are inherently factors of x to the seventh because it can always break it down. It's always being multiplied. Since x to the seventh is just x times 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 x. I think I have one too many x's there. Uh, we can always break off those x to the second times x to the fifth. Those are inherently factors. Am I getting through to you guys on this one? Okay, it's going to be important for our next thing. Now, common factors. So we've got 
factors. Now we're going to talk about common factors, and after that, greatest common factors and how to use them. So what does it mean to be a common factor? When I say the word common to you, what, what's that mean in, in just in English? What's, a, what's something common? Say so what? Something they have similar. Sure, something they have shared. Well, that, that's what it means here. Common kind of means shared. So when we talk about common factors, we're talking about shared factors. And I'll give you an example. So if you want a, just a basic definition instead of common factor, think of it like a shared factor. You can write that down. Common factors mean a shared factor. Let me give you an example. What we're going to do right here is we're going to list out all the factors that we can think of in 12 or 28, so all, 12 and 28, so all those uh, previous classes you had, like Math 80, Math 91, all that stuff, where you, you learned about factors, well, we're going to use that right now, but when we get into the actual practice, it's going to be much quicker for us. So right now we're going to list them. Let's, give me some factors of 12, would you? Two and four. Two and six. You know they always come in pairs? Do you know they always come in pairs? Unless you have a perfect square like 25? All your factors come in pairs. So typically what I tell students, if you've had me before, you know this, start with one. Is one a factor of 12? Mm -hmm. One goes into any number, right? Mm -hmm. So one is always a factor. One, at one times what would give you 12? 12. Oh, no, there we go. So we got two factors already. <laughs> Does two work? Is two a factor of 12? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we got two and six. Uh -huh. Anything else? Three, four, three. As soon as you cross over and get a factor you already have listed, you know you're done for sure. You don't have to keep checking. So we have one, twelve, cool. We got two, six, cool. We got three, four. How about four? Oh, we already have it. As soon as you already have it, you're done with your factors. So as soon as you cross over and get one you already have, you're done. Now let's do twenty-eight. What should we start with? Twenty-eight. One. one. Yeah. Sure. How about two? Is two a factor? Yes. Yes. Two and what? Fourteen. Mm -hmm. How about three? Is three a factor? No. 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 Does three go into 28 evenly? No. Then it can't be a factor. How about four? Does four work? Yes. 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 Okay. How about uh, five? No. How about six? No. no. How about seven? Yes. Is it already on the board? Yes. yes. Then we have listed all of our factors. If you do it in pairs, it's pretty quick like that. Not sure if you're, you're all with that so far. Now we're going to talk about the common factors. All you got to do if you've listed them all out is look for the factors that are the same. Give me one common factor. How about one? Yeah. Does it, does it do anything for it? No, not really. It's always going to be one. Uh, two. What else? Four. Four. Anything else? No. Okay, so we know one's common, two's common, four's not three, not six, not twelve. They're not, they're not listed in both numbers. But the idea of these factors being shared is the idea of a common factor. Now what we're going to get to eventually is the greatest common factor. We can probably talk about it right now. What one of those factors is the biggest number? That's the greatest common factor. And that's the idea that you're going to be dealing with with a lot of, oh man, a lot of this chapter. Let's talk about greatest common factor first. Now, what's also interesting is we can list out the factors for variables, and I alluded, I alluded to it over here. Let's talk about how you would list out the factors for 12x squared. And after that, we're going to do 15x to the fourth. And we'll talk specifically about how to, how to deal with these variables. Well, how about this one? How about with the 12? Do you realize that all of these factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, they're all still going to be factors of 12x. Are you with me on that? Do you understand why? Why we don't have, why we can list out 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, and even though this has an x squared, these are still factors. Do you guys get that? If you're not, you're like, well, I get it, but you really don't get it. Here's why. Uh, do you get that 12x squared is the same thing as 12 times x squared? If factors are these pieces that you get to multiply together to create a term, then any factor of 12, when you multiply it by something else, will inherently create that, that same term. So anything that's a factor of 12, because I'm multiplying it, it's going to be a factor of 12x just by its very nature. Does that clear things up if you didn't quite get that? So when we start with the, the factors of a term that has variables, 
you always start with just the factors of the numbers itself. So some like 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, cool, that's just the numbers. Now we talk about the variables. So we're just going to tack those on here. Think back over here. When we had x to the 7, we had a lot of factors of x to the 7. In fact, the factors were x, x squared, x to the 3rd, x to the 4th, x to the 5th, x to the 6th, 1 is already up there, and x to the 7th. So basically every power, listen carefully, okay, every power leading up to this largest power is always a factor. So when you list this out, all you got to do is go, okay, well, uh, hmm. is x to the first a factor? Yes. Is x to the second a factor? Is it here? Mm -hmm. yeah. x to the second is a factor. Is x to the third a factor here? No, that'd be too much. But what you're going to do, if I listed this out, okay, I'm going to take a little shortcut. If I listed out all the factors, I would have one. One goes into anything. It's always a factor. Remember, factors come in pairs, usually. So if I have one, I would also have x to the seventh. Hey, just, just listen. Is it true that one times x to the seventh gives me x to the seventh? <coughs> but those are factors. Multiplied together, they have to be factors. Uh, if I do x to the, uh, just x to the first power, it's got to come in pairs. What else? X to the sixth. That's right. Hey, oh, wait, look at that one. Uh, how about x to the second? Can I multiply x to the second by something to get x to the seventh? Yes. What is it? X to the third? Yeah, x to the fourth. Notice, look at this. What this says is if you do that by pairs, which you said that we already can do, right? Are you, are you with me? If you do that, then what you have listed out here is 1, and then every single power of x up until you get to that power. So here, we already have the 1. It's built in. 1's there all the time. We have the 2, the 3, the 4, the 6, the 12, all by virtue of having that 12 in that term. Now we also have x. Is that a power underneath x squared? Mm -hmm. x to the second? Yeah. So we just list out every single power until we get to that one. Let's, let's try it here, okay? You tell me what I'm going to have for my 15. What's the first number that I'm going to put up there? Three. One. Probably 1, because I need the 15. So we deal with the numbers first. Uh, what else? Three. Three comes with a five. Is there anything else? No. So one and fifteen, two doesn't work. Three works with the five. Four doesn't work. Five. We already got the five. We're done. We're done with our numbers. Now let's try the variables. So I want I want us to list out what the variables are as far as our factors go. What's the first one? X. Should I put x squared up there? Yes. Sure. Is it a power under x to the fourth? Yes. It is. Do you guys get that it's inherently a factor if it's less than that power? Because I can always write it as a power lower than this times another power. X to the third is lower than x to the seventh. Multiply by x to the fourth. X to the second is lower than x to the seventh. Multiply by x to the fifth. X to the first is lower than x to the seventh. Multiply by x to the sixth. You can always make that up. That means that every single power below or equal to that one is going to be a factor. We just list them. Makes it easy. So x to the first, yes. X to the second, yes. How about x to the third? Yes. yes. Of course. How about x to the fourth? Yes. yes. Yeah. How about x to the fifth? No. 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 X to the fourth, yes. Show of hands if you feel okay with the factors as far as variables go. This part, yeah, probably pretty easy. I know you know that. The variables are what I'm talking about right now. That's what people get a little confused on the question. The one that threw me off was the, the 12x squared at the very end where you have an x by itself and then the x squared. Because mm -hmm. when I see that, I'm seeing 3 with the, the two x's on the end. Okay. Square. Keep in mind that what's going on here is that we're, we're listing out these terms. We're not multiplying all these things together. If you multiply all these things, you're going to get way more than 12. Okay? And you're going to get way more than x squared. We're just listing them. If you multiply this all out, wow, that's x2 that add all those things up. What we're doing is saying, well, ah, what could we divide by? We can divide by 1. We can divide by x and x squared. And x. If you can divide by these things, they are factors. Because that means that when you multiply two things together, they'll give you that term. So we're not multiplying these things. We're listing them right now. Did that, did that clear that up for you? Okay, now let's talk about the common factors. And this is where it's going to get important. What are some common factors here? What do you see? One. One. Three. One. Three. 
Three. Great. Three. Anything else? X. Oh. So as far as the numbers go, anything else besides one and three? What's the listen carefully, okay? This is where we're gonna to jump to the greatest common factor. What's the biggest number? Three. Good. Now we look at the variables almost independently. So uh, do we have common factors? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is weird though, right? Every power is gonna be listed up to the, the largest one. So x is a common factor. What else is a common factor? X squared. Now, how about x to the third? No. Is that a common factor? No. Uh, is it in both places? No. How about x to the fourth? No. No, okay. What's bigger, x or x squared? X squared. Same question as what's bigger, one or three. So, when we get to talk about the greatest <coughs> common factor, here's what you do and listen carefully. You find the greatest common factor of the numbers. That would be three. Are you with me? You find the greatest common factor of the variables. What's bigger? You put those two together. So the three and the why not the x? The biggest. Why not the x to the fourth? It's not there. You take the biggest one that's shared by both. That, by definition, is the greatest common shared factor. So what we do, we do the numbers, we do the variables, we put them together. This right here is the idea of the GCF. What I want to know, if, is that does that make sense to you? Show of hands if it does. You feel okay with that? Yes, yes, yes. Destiny, yes? Okay, cool. Kind of cheated and went a little, little bit ahead. So when we're talking about this, we know what factor is. Factors are those pieces that are multiplied together to give us terms. All about multiplication. Common factors, when they're shared, and now we've jumped to the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is the biggest shared factor. So when we say GCF, what we mean here is the biggest shared factor. And right now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to just go over some examples and get us really, really, really good at finding this. If we fail at finding GCF, we're going to fail at factoring. This is huge for us. It's the very first step every time is factoring the GCF, whenever we talk about that. I'm getting through to you? So let's practice. We're not going to even worry about variables right now. We're just going to do some numbers. Just find the GCF. Um, are there any questions on factors, common factors, or the idea of the GCF? I know this is not purely explained yet, uh, but I want to know if you understand the idea that the greatest common factor is just this biggest thing that's shared by both these terms. Do you understand that? The biggest factor. Okay, good. It's shared by both terms. All right. Well, if we're going to talk about the greatest common factor, this biggest shared factor, we got to have at least two numbers. So let's start with 45 and se 75. Yeah, it looks like a 75 to me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, geez, come on, Leonard. 75. I'm going to give you two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is the way that you already know. I'm going to go very fast through that, that method one. This, listen them all out, that's your first method. You should know how to do that from a previous class. The second method, some teachers gloss over, so I'll make sure you at least see it once. The first method is, man, just listen them all out. So if you have trouble with finding the GCF just in your head, by the way, we need the grade, so I don't want you to just give me one all the time. What's the greatest common factor? One. No, that's a factor. Is it the biggest one? Generally not, unless you have two relatively prime numbers. Um, but no. So if we're going to list these out, we got 1 and we got 45. We'd have 3 and we'd have 15. We'd have 5 and we'd have 9. Did I miss any? Am I good? Can you think of any more? <coughs> I can't think of any more. So 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, 45. I think I have them all. Let's do 75. Again, I, my job right now is not to teach you how to do this. This should be there already. My job is to teach you what to do with it uh, afterwards. You follow? So, the next one. Uh, oh, we got one, we got 75. What else? 
325. Yep, 325. Perfect. What else? 515. Okay, anything else? <coughs> Can you think of any more than that? That's all I have written down. <coughs> okay. Uh, well, do we have any common factors? Yes. One. What's the first one? One. Is it the biggest one? No. Are you always going to have one? Yes. Of course you are. Uh, three, is that the biggest one? No. Five? No. Tell you what, if three and five are both here, that means you have something bigger. Uh, because if they're both multiplied to give you 15, you're going to have a 15. 15, is that the biggest one? Yes. yes. So right now we know our GCF is 15. For small numbers, that's probably the way to go. I will give you another way to do this. Not hard just a little bit more kind of advanced thinking. I uh, use some number theory here. So if I had 45, another way we could do this, you could do this with a number tree. Uh, number trees with, a, with factor trees, uh, with greatest common factors uh, and prime factorization says, you start with the smallest prime numbers and you break it down until you have only prime numbers here. For instance, 3 squared times 5 would be the prime factorization. If you did 75, it'd start off really similar. You'd have 3 times 25, and that would give you 5 times 5. So we would have 3 times 5 squared. I want to know if that makes sense to you. Have you seen that before? Yes. You might not remember exactly how to do it, uh, but you've seen it before. You start with the smallest primes, not the biggest ones. So you start with two. And if those no twos, you go to three. Then you go to five. Then you go to seven, nine, eleven, oh, sorry, not nine, uh, eleven, then thirteen, and so forth and so on. Well, if we did this, we got three squared times five. We got three times five squared. The GCF will always, always, always be the smallest powers of every, I hope some of you guys are zoning, I hope you're not zoning out, some of you guys are, are not listening right now. This is a really good thing to do with large numbers, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's probably the best way to, way to go. Take the smallest power of every different factor. The factors that I see here are 3 and 5, and then 3 and 5 again. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. You can always find the GCF by doing this. Uh, what's smaller, folks, smaller, 3 squared or 3? Three? Three. Three. 3. So GCF should be, yeah, I'm sorry, which one? Three. 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 That's smaller. Times, what's smaller? Five or five squared? Five. What's three times five? Fifteen. Always. Always works. Uh, why that's nice is because if I give you really big numbers, like, uh, let's do the greatest common factor of 196, 2,187, or 84. You don't want to do that in your head? You're going to want to write out every single factor of two, whatever I said. I know I just made it up. You don't want to do that? No, but prime factorization is pretty quick. That's another way that you can go. Okay, let's move on just a little bit. How about uh, how about 32 and 33? 32 and 33. 32 and 33. What, the, what are the factors of uh, 32? One and thirty-two. I'll give you that one. I'll do the hard one for you. Okay. One and thirty-two. I got it. Got your back. Two and sixteen. Give me another one. Someone else. Four and eight. Four and eight. How about five? Six. Seven. Eight. Already got it. So we're done. Uh, thirty-three is going to be a little bit quicker here. We got one and we got thirty-three. Anything else? Four doesn't work, five doesn't work, six doesn't work, seven doesn't work, eight doesn't work, nine doesn't work, ten doesn't work, eleven does, but it's already up there, so we're done. Here's my question. Are there any common factors? Any common factors? Well, one. one. There's always at least one common factor, and it's one. So are there cases where you can have two numbers which only have a greatest common factor of one? Yeah. It's called, if you want fancy words, it's called relatively prime. Means that they have no common factors besides one. Nothing will be common that you can factor out of those two numbers. This right here, this is what we're looking to have after we factor, is numbers that are relatively prime, that no other number goes into it besides one. So here, when you have a GCF of one, it means that if I have two terms with those numbers, I'm not going to be able to factor it the way that I want to. 
how about if I have a, oh, let's see. How about 14, 24, and 60? Are we able to find the greatest common factor of three numbers? Is that possible? It, oh, it means the same thing. It just means, hey, let's find the biggest number that will go into all three of these. So you can do it the same way that you did before. You can do it this way. You can list out all the factors if you want to and find them. Just find them. So one, if you want to do it kind of quickly, if you want to do it quickly and not write everything down, I'll give you a little helpful hint here. Start with the one that has the least number of factors. For instance, um, if I was going to do this in my head and I didn't want to write all of them down, because I don't like doing that, okay? Uh, I'd start probably with 14. And here's what I'd do. I'd say 14. I'd write them out so I, I don't miss any. You, you don't want to miss any. I'd have 1, I'd have 14, I'd have 2, and I'd have 7. Would we agree those are all the factors? Yes. Yeah. Okay. To be a greatest common factor of three numbers, do you, do you get that they have to go into all three of them? Yes. So if I'm, uh, let's see, like here, 6 goes into both 24 and 60, doesn't it? But does it go into 14? No. no. It can't be the GCF. It's got to go into all three. So if you pick the number with the least number of factors, sometimes you can cheat a little bit. One, do I care about one? No. Okay. Two, yes. does two go into 14? Yes. Obviously. Does two go into 24? Yes. Does two go into 60? Yes. Potentially that's it. Check the other ones just to be sure that there's nothing bigger. Does seven go into 24? No. no. Seven goes into 21. It can't go into 24. Does 7 go into 24? No. Do we care if it goes into 60 once we've determined it doesn't go into 24? No. So this doesn't matter. Does 14 go into 24? No. You have quickly found the GCF just by the process of elimination. Pick the one, pick the number that has the least number of factors. Just check the factors. If they don't go into both numbers, then they're not the GCF. Show of hands if that made sense to you. Could you have done it this way and listed them all? Absolutely, but I'm trying to save you guys some time. I'm saving you lives, right? Lives are time. I'm saving your lives. So the GCF for these ones, just two. Very quick way to do it. <clears throat> okay, I kind of previewed this a little bit in the example that was right here before. We're going to talk about variables, and then we're going to put all this stuff together and learn how to factor. Are you ready? Yeah. This is like this is the good stuff. So here we go. Next example. Let's talk about the variables. If I wanted to find the GCF. of x squared, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. GCF of x squared, x to the fourth, and x to the fifth. For those of you who get this idea already, this is a really easy question. Really easy. If you don't, I'm going to make it easy right now. Let's do, let's do this with what we have here. So if I were to list out the factors, you remember list out factors? You remember? You remember? Remember, remember listing out factors, how when I do this, well, there's always a 1. But then I'm just going to have all the powers leading up to my largest power. That's what I'm going to have. Let's look at this real careful. Do you understand that 1's always a factor? Always divides everything. Is x a factor? It's a power of x less than 2. Is x squared a factor? Of course it is, because 1 times that gives me this, this term. If I'm going to do x to the fourth, well, I'm just going to have one, but I'm going to have x and x squared and x to the third and x to the fourth. Every power leading up to x to the fourth. If I do x to the fifth, I'm going to have one and x and x squared and x to the third and x to the fourth and x to the fifth. I hope so. Did I do it right? Yeah. Okay. Now here's my question. Do we have any shared factors? Yes. Is it x to the fifth? No. I'll tell you what, a lot of students when they're first learning this, they look at that and go, oh yeah, x to the fifth, it's the biggest number, it's the biggest one. Obviously that's going to be it, it's greatest. No, greatest share. So all these, all of these have at least x squared, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for all of them have at least this much. If you look here, the biggest one that's actually shared is right there. I don't care that that's x to the third and it's shared there, I don't care. 
That doesn't have it, so it's not the greatest common. Common means shared, the greatest common factor. That's what we're looking for. Show of hands if you feel okay with, with that idea. Cool. So in our case, man, it becomes really easy. You look at these ones, well, I, I know it seems funny, but take the smallest power. If you take the smallest power that's listed right here, that's the shared. That's the one that's shared. You can't do x to the fifth, because that doesn't have x to the fifth. It has at most x squared. Does this have, this has x squared, yeah? Does this have at least x squared? Yeah. Does this have at least x squared in it? Then that's your GCF. So GCF here would be x squared. I want you to try one, just real quick, to make sure that you, you all get the hang of it. Let's do uh, a couple examples. What I want from you is I want the GCF of y to the fourth, y to the fifth, and y to the eighth. And then I want the GCF of x and x to the tenth. And you can just write it right next to the tenth. If you need to list out all the factors like I did here, do it until it really makes sense. Don't do shortcuts right now because this is imperative you understand this. So if you need to list them out, all list every power of x up until that number. List every power of x up until that number. List every power of x up until that number. Look for the biggest one. That's your GCF. You can do that every time. Once you understand this concept, though, you can go very, very fast on that. Uh, does anyone need more time on these? Have you figured out the GCF for y to the fourth, y to the fifth, and y to the eighth? What's the biggest power that, but that's shared by all three of those terms? What is it? Y to the fourth. Perfect. That's right. You can't go any bigger because that doesn't have any more than y to the fourth. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like going out to lunch with your buddies and you want to make sure that everybody eats and uh, you have eight dollars and you have five dollars and poor old Leonard has four dollars and you go let's go to uh, let's go to this place where it costs five dollars. Can I eat? And four dollars. Can I eat? No. Let's go to this place that has eight dollars. Can I eat? No. Screw you guys. <laughs> so, uh, where where's everyone gonna be able to eat? At the four dollar restaurant. That's my type of living, folks. You gotta go where everyone can eat. So go where the power is shared by all. Y to the fourth. Hopefully that analogy made sense to you. How about x and x to the oh wow. How many x's are here? What power of x is that? One. one, one, one. X to the tenth. What's what's the greatest common factor? X. X. You can't go any bigger than that, because this guy only has one dollar, poor guy. Uh, <laughs> That's it. It's, that has more, sure, but you need to go with the largest factor that is shared by all the terms that are listed. Have I explained it well enough for you guys to understand it? Now we're going to put the idea together. We're going to talk about the greatest common factor of these terms that involve both numbers and variables, but it's no different than what you've done. Did you guys get the numbers? Mm -hmm. Did you get the variables? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing. You should put them together at the end. So let's talk about that real quick. Did you know about that, by the way? If you didn't, isn't that kind of neat? Works every time. It's really awesome. I like it. So we're going to find the GCF here. I'm going to stop just writing out all the factors. We're going to get to the point where this is going to be very easy for us to do in our heads because we're so good at, at, at uh, doing factors of numbers and listing factors in our heads and variables now. So we're going to stop listing out everything. It's going to take way too long. And the idea is get the greatest common factor quickly and then, and then use that to factor. We're going to be doing that in a minute. So um, what I want you to do here, when you're factoring out the greatest common factor, when you're looking for the greatest common factor, do the numbers first, then do the variables, and just combine them. So I remember that we, we had an example like that, right? It kind of cheated and went in advance. I'll do that from time to time. Let's look at the numbers. The numbers here are, what's the, what are the coefficients is what they're called. What's the coefficients? Negative nine. Negative nine is one of them. Someone else, what's another coefficient? Fifteen. Fifteen, and then Six. is there a number that goes into all three of those numbers? Yes. You can always answer yes because it's one. I want the biggest number that goes into all three. Three. Three, three does. Sure. 
So no, no, one's not going to help us. Six doesn't work. So when we write out GCF, we can do it in a two-part process. We do the numbers first. So three. It's true, right? Three goes in nine, 15, and six. We're good. And then we do the variable. So when we're looking at the variables, it's basically doing this process first, exactly the same. Just like we got the two, we got the three. Do the same thing. Then do the variables. Just like we got the x squared here or the x. Th What's the greatest common factor as it refers to the variables in this case? What is it? X. That's right. That's got more. That's got more. But well, that's the that's the smallest one. So we have to go with the guy who's got the smallest amount of money here. This guy's only got a buck. So yeah, these guys have at least one x. But we're going with the greatest common. It has to be shared. So if I can list out x to the fourth. That would take this guy out of the picture, and that guy out of the picture. X squared would, this guy would have it, but that guy wouldn't. So x to the first power is, <coughs> as far as our variable is concerned, greatest common factor. What that means is when we put our numbers and our variables together, greatest common factor is? 3x. Yeah. Yeah. Does 3x go into this term? Yeah. Yeah, sure it does. Remember, it goes in means divides, because a factor is multiplication, so the inverse of that is division. Does 3x divide 15x to the fourth? Yes. Yeah, of course. Does it divide 6x? Yes. Yeah. Notice how if this was a square, would x squared divide x? No. Um, too big. If that was a 4, would that divide? No, no too big. That's a problem. I think I said 4 and wrote 2, didn't I? Oh, well. No, you said 2. I did? You said 2 first, wrote 2, then write 4. I got it right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Tell you what, I'm going to do one more with you. Kind of a more advanced one, looks more advanced, not harder, it's the same exact thing. Then I'm going to have you do a couple on your own. Okie dokie? Mm -hmm. So you can practice it. So the first things. Lots going on. It can look intimidating, but follow the explanation here. Follow the explanation. The explanation is find the, the GCF for your numbers, and then look for the GCF of your variables. Don't just do it all at once. It can be kind of hard to do. So first thing, let's just see. Let's pretend there's no variables. Let's look at numbers. What are the coefficients here? Coefficient? 11. 11. 11. 11. 11. It's, not, it's never nothing. 1. 1. Yeah. If there's nothing there, it's 1. Uh, so, coefficient 11, 1, hey, what number goes into all three? 11, 1, and 1. 1. one. one. Do you need to write down the 1? No. no. Really? I'd prefer if you didn't, but I'm going to put it here just to say that we did it, okay? Uh, now we're going to go over to the, the A's and our B's. You know what? Just like we can do our numbers independently of our variables, you can do each variable independently of themselves because it's all being multiplied together. So don't worry about the B's right now. Look at the A's. I got A to what power? One, one, one. Do you know that you're done right now? Yeah. A to the second. And A to, okay, what's in common to all three of those? A to the third. Not A to the second? No. Not A to the fourth because I have one, two, three, four? Not that? No. no, no, don't do that, okay? You're looking at these independently saying, what's the biggest value of A, power of A, that's going to go into all three. And that would be A to the first. Are you with me on this one? Are you yes. sure? Yeah. You guys in the middle? Yes, no? Okay. Yeah, we're all good. So, one goes into all the coefficients. A to the first power, well, that's the greatest common factor as far as A to the Let's do the B. I have B to the third, I have B to the third, and I have B squared. What's the biggest one that goes into all of them? Perfect. Erase this one. That is our GCF. Does it make, you know what, you should always check it too. You should always check it. Does A, B squared divide this? In fact, if I divided it, I would have B to the first power left over. Are you with me on that one? Does this divide this? Yeah. I would have A times B if I divided that. Does this divide this? Yeah. I would have what? One. One. Are you ready to try some on your own? Yes. Yeah. Easy, medium, hard. 
Medium. What do you think? Medium? Medium. You're still learning it, right? Yeah. Is it going to take practice? Yeah. That's it. It's going to take some practice. Do the numbers. Do the variables. You can do each variable independently. Just don't start picking the biggest power that you see. That's a problem. Pick the biggest power that's shared by all of them, and you get it right every time. I hope you understand that doing this, doing this is so important for what we're going to do next, because you can't factor unless you know how to find the greatest common factor. I mean, it's, it's right there. You've got to know how to do it. I think you'll be fine at it, but you will need to practice it. Okay, so how about... I want that. I want the GCF. Negative 18y squared, negative 63y to the third, 27y to the fourth. One thing I want you to look at here, uh, did you notice how that negative had nothing to do with what that was? Yeah, it's interesting, right? Okay. And we'll talk more about how to use that to your advantage when we actually get into factoring. So I want the GCF here, I want the GCF here, and I'll give you one more just for funsies. Actually, some of you might be done just after writing them down, huh? They can go pretty quickly. Look at the first example. Have I given enough time to, to complete these, or at least do the first two? All right. First example, what should we do? Should we look at all of this, or just the numbers first? The numbers. numbers. Let's do the numbers. 18. Do I need to worry about the negatives? No. 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 When, we're fact when we're actually factoring, I'll show you how to do that appropriately. But right now, no. And it, it's not going to affect the actual absolute value of what you factor anyway. So 18, 63, 27. Oh, uh, man. Have you found something that goes with all of those? Nine. Nine. Nine goes into all of them. Yeah. You know, you could you could check it with maybe this one, or maybe this one, because it has the least number of factors. This has one, three, nine, and twenty-seven. Does twenty-seven work here? No. 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 Maybe go do the nine. Does nine work here? Yes. Does nine work here? Yes. Hey, you're done. It's nine. Now, variables at this point should be really easy. It's easy. It looks I mean you think it's gonna be harder. It's not. The numbers are harder. What's the greatest common factor, as far as the variable is concerned, that are shared by all three? What is it? Y squared. Perfect. That's exactly right. You don't add them all up and get y to the ninth or something. You just get, well, the one that's shared by all of them. Y squared. Show of hands, we got nine y squared. Brilliant. Very well done. Okay, how about the next one? Uh, numbers first. We got four, we got one. We got three. Uh, what's the number as far as your GCF? One. one. We can write down the one just to keep it in our head that we did our numbers. Uh, now, the variables at x squared, x to the third, x to the eighth, what is the greatest common variable? x squared. So we're going to have one x squared. Erase the one, you don't need it. But let's double check. Does x squared go into this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Does x squared go into this? Yes. Go into this? Yeah. Good. Did you get to that one? Mm -hmm. Kind of fun, right? What's the, uh, what's the greatest common factor as far as the number is concerned? One. Yeah, there, there are no coefficients besides one, so you're going to have a one. You don't even need to write it if you don't want to. Let's talk about the A's. Remember, you can do the A's and the B's or any variables independently of each other. So look at the A's first. What's the greatest common factor in reference to the, in regards to 
the powers of a. a squared. squared. Beautiful. Why is it a squared and not a to the fourth? Because that is the most. It's the most. Okay. So even yeah. So even though a to the fourth is the biggest power of a, it's not the biggest power of a that can be found in each turn. A to the second is. How about the b's? Squared. Sure. Yes. Does that have at least this in it? Yeah. yeah. You can divide, right? Have we gone over any of the powers? No. Okay, so we're good. That's our greatest common factor. Show you got that one. Perfect. We're going to go just over a couple examples about how to use this. Really, I want to just get the steps in your head. That way, next time we come in, this is going to be just we're going to be money on this. Do you feel okay about uh, finding the factors of numbers? Yeah. Variables. Yeah. Putting them together. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can do this, you can factor. And here's how we do it. I, by the way, uh, what I'll do sometimes when I first introduce them, I'll give you an example and I'll give you the steps on how to do it so you can refer back to how to do this later. So let's start with something very simple. Uh, some of you might have, I'm guessing you have seen this before. Let's do something like 6x plus 14. 6x plus 14. Now, instead of just listing out the factors, we're going to be factoring. We're going to be using that greatest common factor, finding the greatest common factor, to our advantage. Now, here's the deal. You already know what distribution is, correct? Yes. So if I gave you, you don't need to write this down, just, just watch, I'm erasing them in anyway. If I give you 5 times x plus 2, and I said distribute, you would multiply this here. You would multiply this here, and you get 5x plus 10. Yes, no? Yes. What we're doing in factoring is literally going opposite of that, in reverse of that. So whereas distribution is multiplication to get rid of parentheses, okay, focus up here for a second. Whereas distribution is multiplication to get rid of parentheses, factoring is the opposite. What's the opposite of multiplication? And that means we're going to be creating parentheses. So when you factor, you're basically going not from here to here, which you're used to. You're going from here to here. You're going in reverse. So we're not multiplying, we're dividing. We're not getting rid of parentheses, we're creating them. Quick head nod if you feel okay with the idea of that. Good. So step number one. All the stuff we've been doing is step number one. So find the GCF of all the terms. Um, I am expecting that you understand what a term is. When we look at this, term term, not term, term, term. Terms are those pieces of a mathematical expression that are separated by pluses and minuses. So when you look at this problem, this uh, expression, this is one term, that's one term. You, you all right with that one? Okay, so what we're going to do first, find the GCF of all the terms. Well, let's do that. Let's do the GCF of all the terms. Tell me, GCF, can you look at 6x and 14? Just pretend it's like this, okay? Pretend it's like that. Can you look at 6x and 14 and tell me a greatest common factor? Two. What about variables? Are there any variables that are shared? No. Ah, so it's not like this or this where we have shared variables. This has an x, this don't have an x. It can't be in the GCF. Well, what did you say the GCF was again? Two. Two. Two's the biggest factor that goes into both of these. Show of hands be okay with that. The number came first, we had no variables, so we're good. Step number two. What you're gonna do with step number two, after you found the GCF, write the GCF. in front of some parentheses. So step number two says, uh, I'm sorry, one more time. What's our GCF? Two. two. And factoring, it gets rid of parentheses or it creates parentheses? Creates. So we're gonna do our GCF and then we're gonna put a set of parentheses. This is what I mean by step number two. So step number one, find GCF. Oh my gosh, we should be so good at that right now, right? We spent an entire hour finding GCF. Now. Write the GCF in front of some parentheses because that's what we're creating here. After that, step number three. Distribution multiplies. Factoring divide. divide. 
each term, we know what terms are. Divide each term by G, C, F. Just divide, that's it. You all know how to divide. Even if there was variables, you would know how to divide that. We'll, show, we'll see that in some subsequent examples, but here we go. So step one, find GCF. You all feel okay with GCF? Okay, step two, write the GCF. Hey, already done, got it. Step three, just divide. Take each one of these terms and divide it by the number you've just written. So can you do 6x divided by 2? What's 6x divided by 2? 3x. Yes. It still has the x, correct? Because there was no x to divide, so it's okay. Plus, hey, plus. Uh, can you do 14 divided by 2? Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is factor. Step number four, just check your work. Make sure you have it right. Do not go any further until you have it right. Here's how you check. Okay, listen. Here's how you check whether you have it right. The first thing you do, you distribute to make sure this is accurate. Is 2 times 3x 6x? Yeah. Yes. Is 2 times 7 14? Yes. The next thing you do, you make absolutely certain that you have found the GCF. What that means is that the, remember the special word I gave you phrase? It's called relatively prime. Remember that? Mm -hmm. These numbers have to be relatively prime. If they're not, you've made a mistake. Can you divide 3 by and 7 by anything besides 1? No. That's good. Are there any shared variables here? No. That means you factored the GCF correctly. And that's the whole idea. So step number 4, if you want to write step 4, it's just check your work. And that's the two ways that you do it. Show of hands if today has made sense for you. Good. Okay, so we're going to continue factoring. And the very first, I'm going to say this probably 100 times, the very first step in factoring anything that you're going to factor is always finding the GCF if there is one. That is your first step no matter what else I teach you for the rest of the semester. Whenever you're involved in factoring, the very first thing you check for is what? GCF. GCF. That's number one. So the, in our case up here, the idea is, I'll lead you through this because it's been a while since we've done any of this. The very first idea is look at how many terms you have. Remember terms are those things, those pieces of a math expression that are separated by pluses and or minuses. So pluses or minuses, how many terms do I have? Two. We look at those two terms and basically we just find the GCF like we practiced so many times before with those two terms. Remember that we're looking for numbers first and then variables and we put those two things together. So when we look at 49x minus 35, those two terms, 49x and the 35, we think of a number, any number that, that can go into both of those terms, and the biggest number, the greatest number that goes into factors both of those terms, common, greatest common factor. What number goes into both of those? Okay, so I'm not going to rewrite the steps I gave to you last time, but the idea is once you have determined what the GCF is, you can write it down. You don't really have to, but you can just keep it in your mind. We get the number first, then we look for any variables. Are there any variables common to both of these terms? So while this has an x, that one doesn't, we, we say no, there's no variable that's common to both. Hence, our GCF for, for this expression is just 7. Show of hands feel okay with that so far. Cool deal. Now, the next step I gave you was, well, factoring is the opposite, the inverse, of distribution. So where distribution multiplies and gets rid of parentheses, factoring divides and creates them. So we're really creating parentheses every time we factor. That Always, if you factor something, you're going to create parentheses. So when we've determined our GCF is 7, what I've said to do is put that 7, the GCF, right out front, and then create a set of parentheses. What you're saying here is I'm going the opposite of distribution. Uh, I'm going to create parentheses and divide to get my inner two terms here. So basically, since distributions multiply, factoring is divide, to get these two terms, we're just going to divide. What are we going to divide by? Why? That's it. That's a GCF. That's what actually divides into both of those terms. So we're going to take that. Sometimes you can do them in your head. When they get more advanced, I'll show you some methods on how to write this out so that you can, you can see really what's going on. Basically, you do it term by term. Can you do 49x <coughs> divided by 7? What is it? 7x. That goes right here. That's our very first term. So base, it's just these two terms divided by our GCF, and we put our remaining two terms inside our parentheses. Can you check your work? Yes. Yeah, if factoring is the opposite of distribution, that means to check our work, we just have to distribute. So 7 times 7x is 49x. We know we got it right. Also, this sign is going to be the same unless we start factoring out negatives, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But generally, if you're factoring out positive numbers, your signs don't change. 
Now we go to the next one. What's 35? Remember, we're dividing, we're factoring. What's 35 divided by 7? 5. And you always double check your work. Don't go any further. It'd be so silly to go further because right now, this is the problem, right? It's can you factor or not. Later on in chapter 7, 8, 9, oh, sorry, not 9, but 10, 11, 12, 13, you're going to be factoring, but that's a small part of the puzzle. So don't just assume you have it right and go on and get the whole problem wrong because you will waste a lot of time there. Make sure you got it right. So first thing we check for, does this work? Is 7 times 7x 49? 7 times, we can consider it negative 5, no it's minus, we consider it negative 5. 7 times negative 5, is that the minus 35 that we want? Yes. Cool. Are these, there was a key word there, special word, relatively prime. Are they relatively prime? Which yes. means the only thing that goes into both those terms is 1. Yes. Then we're done. That's the idea of factoring. Do you guys feel okay with the factoring? I know it's been a while, but does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, so that's our factoring. Let's go ahead and do a couple more examples. We're going to start ramping it up. Uh, this was probably the easiest one that we can do at this point. Uh, we're going to start talking about how variables play a part of this, and then, uh, then put numbers, variables together, and see what all we can do. So next example, how about y to the fifth minus y to the seventh? Y to the fifth minus y to the seventh. Uh, first thing, how many terms do we have? What do you think? Two. Perfect. What's the first step in factoring every single time? What is it? GCF. Let's look for the GCF. And, and for now, we're going to write it down. When you get uh, more practice with this, you're not going to do that. You're just going to go for it. You're just going to factor. So we're looking for the GCF. Um, are there any numbers which go into those two terms? One. So just one. Do we have to write down the one? No. You can, but it's not going to help us. So next we look for any variables. Are there any variables which go into both of those terms? Remember, it's very much like doing this and saying, hey, what's the GCF of those two terms? You're doing the same thing. It's just now we have a minus between it. But this idea does not change. What is the GCF according to the y to the fifth and y to the seventh? Remember that what it is, it's the biggest power that both of these things have. Not the biggest power you see, but the biggest power that both of these terms contain. What is it? That's right. Feel all right with the GCF? Yeah. Hey, we're factoring. What, what do I do with that y to the fifth? Where are we going to put that? Mm -hmm. So if we have y to the fifth, and we have, wait a minute, factoring means that we're going the opposite distribution. So we're going to be creating some parentheses here. That always happens when you're factoring. Now we're just going to figure out what these two terms are going to be. You still have the same number of terms, don't you, inside those parentheses. There's two here. There's going to be two terms here. You're just creating a factor, something that you can multiply by that gives you back your original expression. That's the idea. Now, if you're a little bit kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to divide with these exponents, here's a tr not a trick, uh, something that you can do to help you out. In order to find these, you guys all, all know that you divide, right? Well. Take your first term, divide by your GCF, and whatever your answer is, by the way, this has to work, otherwise you picked the wrong GCF. It must always divide, otherwise it's not a factor. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to divide, you go, wait a minute, it doesn't work. Pick the wrong thing. So go back and fix your GCF. This will always work. How much is y to the fifth divided by y to the fifth? One. Go see that. You can always do it off the side if it gets a little bit more advanced for you. Man, I can't do it in my head right now. Not a big deal. Is that sign going to change? What do you think? No. Okay. Next one. This one. So we wrote the first term divided by GCF. That's y to the fifth divided by, just happened to be y to the fifth. It ends up being one. That's our first term. Now we're going to take y to the seventh. We already know that we're going to have a minus there. Divided by y to the, wait, divided by what? The fifth. Sure. Second term. Divided by GCF, you have in two places. Can you do y to the seventh divided by y to the fifth? Yeah. yeah. Y to the seventh. How do we do that? What do you do with those those numbers there? <laughs> yeah, we know that when we're dividing exponent or common bases with with exponents, we subtract those exponents. So we have y to the second, and that y to the second goes there. Can you still check your work even though you dealt only with variables here? Yeah. yeah. Distribution is the opposite of factoring, so those things work hand in hand, like division and multiplication. It is division and multiplication. So if we checked it, y to the fifth times one, y to the fifth, and y to the fifth times y to the second. Remember, oh yeah, exponent rules. When I multiply common bases, I add, add those powers. So that would be y to the seventh, and we know we have it right. Now let's keep going just a little bit further. Um, 
How about this? Is there anything that goes into both 1 and y squared? Okay, let's check for that. Is there anything that goes into both those things? 1. 1 does. Anything bigger than 1? Mm -hmm. Are they relatively prime? Yes. And we double check so we know we're good. Show of hands feel okay with what we're talking about. Now, in the future, we will be talking about how we can go further on something like this. Uh, this, if you, if you know this concept, if you've had this class before, or the factory before, which I think most of you have, uh, remember, we have this kind of like a, a refresher for you. That's called the difference of squares. And we're going to talk about, did you know that term, that difference of squares term? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you remember it, great. If not, we're going to cover it. That's called the difference of squares, and I'll show you what to do with that as we, we move forward. Okay, what I'd like you to do now, I'm just going to give you two examples. I want you to do them on your own to make sure that you get this concept. When I do this, they're going to be really, really similar to the last two that I gave you. It's just so you can have that, that practice uh, so that I don't want you to completely phone your notes. If you have to have your notes, okay. But try to do this fresh without having to go back. And that way you, you, you actually get it embedded in your head. You guys with me on this stuff? Mm -hmm. You're quiet today. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm excited, so... Might be that I'm extremely tired and running just purely off adrenaline, but whatever. <laughs> People on the video don't know this, but had a baby, in the case, not me personally. <laughs> weird. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead with these two. So we're just working on factoring the GCF, so I want you to do that one. These two, please. So the idea is factoring is the opposite of distribution. Instead of multiplying, we are dividing. So the first thing we have to find is what will divide all of our terms. Remember, it's all of the terms here. In our case, we only have two. In the next examples, we're going to have three, four, and so forth and so on. So for us, in the first example, we're looking at 4t squared plus 12. We've got to find a number or a variable or both that will divide both of those terms. What number is that? Four. So if you want to write GCF, great. If not, that's OK. All you're going to do is write the GCF, whatever you have, in front of some parentheses. Factored means we're creating parentheses. And then start dividing. What's 4t squared, first term, divided by our GCF? So 4t squared divided by 4, you can even think of it like that. What is the answer? T squared. T squared. First term inside of our parentheses. Is the plus going to change? No. Okay. 12 divided by 4, our GCF. Have you double checked it to make sure that you're right? Yes. Don't go any further before you double check it. You gotta make sure, okay? I know it seems silly, I don't know, it's a pretty easy one. Yeah, okay, it's easy. But later on, when they become more difficult, double check it. Can we go any further here? Is there a number or variable that goes into both those terms? No. no. Relatively prime is a keyword, we're good to go. We, we can double check the distribution in our head. Next up, tell me the GCF. I just want the right side people. These are two terms. Tell me the GCF with uh, y to the eighth plus y to the fifth. What's the GCF there? Y to the twenty-one. Cool. That's the largest power of y that is common to both of them. Y to the eighth, it's too much for this guy. Remember, did I give you the lunch analogy? Going to lunch, okay. Y to the eighth, if you need to write it down, maybe write it real softly under there, divide by y to the fifth. What's y to the eighth divided by y to the fifth? Third. Plus, plus, okay, cool. And now y to the fifth divided by y to the fifth, what is that? Show of hands if you got those two. That's great. That's fantastic. That's factoring the GCF. Are you ready to step it up just a little bit? Mm -hmm. By the way, in the previous examples, this one and this one, this is called a difference of cubes. I'm going to show you how to do that later. This right here is called, sorry, difference of squares. This right here is called a sum of cubes. And we're going to talk about how to factor this. You can actually keep going on this problem. Right now, as far as the GCF, you're done. But we can do other kind of brands of factoring as we go through these problems. So, let's start getting towards that. Oh dear, alright. 
So negative 12x to the third, we get a plus 10x squared minus 2x. Uh, left side people, real quick, how many terms do you have? Three. 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 So if we're going to factor by the GCF, which is always our first step, we've got to have a GCF that goes into just two terms, right? Three terms. All three terms? Mm -hmm. All three terms. So in our idea for finding a, a factor by the GCF, you've got to come up with something some factor that goes into all the terms, not just one or two, but all three of them, or all four if you have four, everything. So let's look at the numbers first. Remember we can do numbers and variables separately. Let's look at the numbers. I got negative 12, I got 10, and I got a negative 2 for my coefficients. Can you tell me a number that goes into all three of those? Remember that it doesn't have to be negative or positive uh, for it to have a factor. So negative 12 doesn't really matter. What number are you going to pick? Two. two. Okay. Cool. 2 goes into 12, and 10, mm -hmm. 2, cool. That means that we can divide all three of these numbers by 2. Is that true? Yes. That means we can factor by it. Is that the biggest number that goes into all three of them? Yes. Yeah. We want the biggest one. That's the greatest idea. Now we look for the variables. Remember, we do them separately. So I got x cubed, I got x squared, and I got x. Can you give me a variable that goes to all three of those factors, all three of those terms? Yeah, x. If we put that together, that right there is our GCF. Okay, uh, middle people, tell me the next step. What am I going to do? Put it outside the parentheses. Okay. So I got my 2x. I know factoring means parentheses. Quick question. How many terms are going to be inside the parentheses? Does this get rid of terms? So if you have two terms, you're going to have two terms and a factor. If you have three terms, you're going to have three terms and a factor. It's actually making it look a little bit bigger, isn't it? So inside there's going to be the same number of terms, but outside you're going to have this factor that you've divided out. <clears throat> now we start dividing. If you need to do this off to the side, do it. There's no sense in trying to do this in your head and getting it wrong. If you have trouble dividing this by this, and that's what factoring is, just write it out there. Negative 12x divided by 2x. That's fine. Uh, I don't mind seeing well, I do mind that one. Why? It's it's wrong. If you do that, then sure, that's okay. How much is negative 12 divided by 2? Negative 6x squared. What is it? Negative 6x squared. And yeah, x cubed divided by x. Remember, this is x to the first. So if you subtract them, 3 minus 1 is x squared. That is your very first term. If you want to write this off to the side, do it. If it helps you, do it. If it doesn't, if you can do this straight in your head, that's fine too. I don't care. You didn't know how you guys learned. So if you struggle with this now, I'm always getting the wrong answer, write it out. If not, if you're, if you're quick, it makes perfect sense, I can do it in my head, cool, do it in your head. Let's do the next one. I'm going to do this one in, just in our heads here. How much is 10x squared divided by, because remember we're factoring, divided by 2x. So 10 divided by 2 gives us? 5. And x squared divided by x gives us? X. Plus or minus? Plus. Lastly, plus or minus here. And then, oh yeah, that's, that's a nice one. How much is 2x divided by 2x? One. Notice how when you're factoring, you don't get rid of terms. They can change to ones, but that's the lowest that you can get right there. So when you have a GCF that matches up with one of your terms, you don't get zero. You get one, because something divided by itself is always one. That's the idea. Show me answer right now. Okay. Now, can you check it? Should you check it? Yes. Should you check to see that these are all relatively prime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't go any further before that. Now I'd like to do something else. A lot of times in math, it's really, really helpful to factor so that two things happen. One, that your polynomial, this is just a math expression inside here with more than one term, uh, that your polynomial is in order. In order means that it goes from largest to smallest exponent ending with a constant. So for instance, this out of order. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. This is out of order. This is in order. This is in order, in order, in order. Do you guys get it? This is in order. We factor so that that happens. We like to put things in order even before we factor. So here we probably would have done this a little different. Second thing, we also like to factor so that the first term of the polynomial that is in order, I'll say that again because some of you guys are zoning out already. Don't zone out. <laughs> so, you'll, you'll want to factor so that firstly it's in order. You get it? Mm -hmm. Secondly, that the first term is positive. That helps a lot 
because the next techniques we're going to do are dealing with these guys, how you factor this. And it's really, really hard if that is negative. Does that make sense to you? So when you do this process, when you factor out your GCF, you could have one of two answers. One could be just like this, 2x, and this is, this is perfectly fine as far as factoring the GCF. But there is an alternative. And this is the one that I'm going to prefer because it makes the rest of our lives easier. Instead of, instead of going just with 2x, check this out. Follow, follow the logic here. Um, is this an order from largest to smallest yeah. as far as the exponents go? Yes. That's great. That's what we want. Three, two, one. You with me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I factored, I factored 2x. Did I get a positive here? No. This is what I want to be positive. How can I change this to be positive? What would I have to do to my GCF? Multiply by a negative. Make a negative 2x. Okay. So instead of having the GCF of 2x, let's say I did a GCF of negative 2x. Is it possible? Yes. Yeah. Will negative 2x still divide that? Yeah. And that? Yeah. And that? Yeah. What's going to happen to all three of my signs? They're going to change. That's the idea. So you have choice here, okay? The, it, both of these are going to be absolutely correct, but as far as continuing the process of factoring, it makes it a lot easier if you factor so that your first term becomes positive. The only thing you've got to worry about is that you don't mess up the rest of your sign. So I'm going to lead you through it one time real quick, and then we're going to continue with another problem. Uh, if we factor out the negative 2x, tell me something. What's uh, negative 12x to the third divided by negative 2x? Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a... Bam. So we got our 6x squared. Positive 10x. Positive divided by a negative is a... Negative. negative divided by a negative is a... Positive. Are these the same? Yes. Yeah. These are... The, well... Do they look the same? No. Do they represent the same thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which one's going to be nicer for us? It kind of depends on the context of your problem. This technically is factoring out of GCF. So is that one. This one would be easier to work on after this, though. Show of hands if you understand the, the difference there. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Tell you what, I want you to try a couple of them on your own. In fact, what I want out of you, I'm going to give you two of them that I know that you can do really well. And I'm going to give you one that's going to challenge you just maybe a little bit. To see if you remember how to do this. Are you guys ready for that? Mm -hmm. Question. Um, you know how you said, like, when you check and make sure everything's relatively prime? Relatively yeah. Prime? Mm -hmm. What happens if it's not? Like, it's so correct. If you, if you have some terms, like two or three terms that are not relatively prime, you did this wrong. Factor in GCF will create. If you do the GCF, not just a CF. See if it's a common factor, right? If you do the greatest common factor, your terms will be relatively prime. They have to be. Otherwise, you would have something else that would divide all those terms, and that would be part of your GCF. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is why I'm always having you check. I don't want you to just factor out uh, y here, because if you factor out y, these things are not relative to prime. But, um, well, never mind then. No, keep, Cause, keep going. Because I was going to say 6 isn't really relatively, relatively prime. With what? Because 6 can be divided by 2 Okay, and three. what relatively prime means is that when you look at this number and this number and this number, nothing divides all three of those numbers except okay. for 1. It's not just that the 6, I mean, yeah, you're going to have some numbers that uh, you can factor the numbers individually, but what rel relatively prime means as this number relates to a different number, only one divides it. That's what relatively prime means. Not that you can't uh, decompose it as a composite number. That it's kind of a different, am I making my point that those are a little bit different of an idea? <clears throat> so here's what I want from you. I want you to do the first two problems. I'm going to say that you're going to be just fine on these because they're things like what we've done. The next, the last one that I'm going to give you, a little bit challenging. I know you can all do it, but pay attention to what the actual GCF is. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, so first one. I want you to identify the GCF. And this is up to you. You can use a positive or a negative. I don't care. I would, you know how I would probably do this problem. So pick the correct GCF and factor it. And then after that, I want you to do this one. This is another one that I think you'll have no problem with. 
This last one may be a little bit challenging. I know you can do it. Okay, there you go. I'll be walking around in just a minute. If you need help on this, now is the time to ask. Don't wait until it's too late. Also, keep in mind that if you want to really learn how to do something without relying on something else as a crutch, try to do these without using your notes verbatim, okay? Try not to go, Oh, what's he doing? Okay, now let me follow that step. If you have to at this point, do it, okay? Because I'd rather you get that at least that down. But if you can do it without your notes, that's better. That's what I want you to do as you're doing your homework. Don't just always go back and forth between notes and do an example. That, that's, that's lame, okay? Because when you get your test, it's not going to be embedded in your head. So get to that point where you can do these problems without notes and you are going to be absolutely golden as far as factor in GCF. I know, right? Fractions. Are you are you fraction kidding me here? Are you fraction? Kidding me? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, fractions already? Seriously? Hey, by the way, can you uh, can you check your work on all these problems? Yes. Do you have an excuse if you get these wrong? No. Not really, because you can always check them. Just by distribution. Remember, distribution. And factor in our inverses. So all it takes is a little bit of multiplication. Get rid of the parentheses and you should know if you have that right. Okay, if you're still working great, have you guys finished at least the first two of them? Okay, I'm going to start on the first two up here. So, first one. Oh my gosh, negative 8y to the 6th plus 16y to the 4th minus 8y squared. Can you give me a number? which goes into all three of those terms. Eight does. Did you all get eight? We don't want to just have two. We don't want four. We want the largest, the greatest common factor. So for us, we're going to factor out at least an eight. Uh, now, how about the variables? Are there any variables which are shared? Why second? Yeah, don't just get the numbers. We've got to have everything here. So numbers, great, eight. Variables, y to the sixth, y to the fourth, y squared. Well, the biggest one, the greatest one that goes into all of them is y squared. Why to the fourth is too much because this guy doesn't have it. Why to the eighth is why to the sixth is way too much because both of these guys don't have it. You wouldn't be able to divide by that. And if you if you don't believe me, check this out. If you did eight y to the sixth as your GCF and started trying to divide these things, is that going to work? No. That's too small for that to, to work. Uh, that means that when you start factoring, like I showed you those steps before, you come to an impasse, and that's not a good thing. We don't want negative exponents in polynomials right now. Okay, that's really awkward. So we got 8y squared, and then we have, how many terms are going to be inside? Three. You know what? There's one other thing I want to talk about right now. Is this in order? Yes. Okay. Might I choose something just a little bit different than the, the 8's perfect, the y squared's perfect, but I might choose something a little different. What might I do instead? Negative. Yeah, I might do that. And the reason is, what is the reason again? Yeah, if this is positive, that helps us a lot for future factoring and for solving things. And so typically, is it, is it a must right now? No. The must for you to understand is where in the world that 8 comes from. 
where in the world that y squared comes from, and how to use it to get these three terms. That's what you have to understand. In the future, we're going to be doing this because it's going to be really time saving. It's going to be really useful for us. So this is what you have to have. If you get this right now, that's great. If you get that, well, we're going to pick the negative because I want that, my first term here, to be positive. So we're going to do that one. How much is negative 8y to the 6 divided, divided by negative 8y squared? Remember, a negative divided by negative is a... 8 divided by 8 is... Cool, we can do it that way. How about y to the 6 divided by y squared? Your first term should be y to the 4. For how many people is it y to the 4? Did you get that? Can you double check it? Add these, because so we're multiplying common basis, that's y to the 6, negative 8, y squared. Hey, yeah, we got exactly the same thing. Next up, should this be a plus or a minus? Minus. Why? Because you're pulled out of negative. Positive by negative. So remember, we divide term by term. 16, y to the 4th, divided by negative 8, y squared. Positive divided by negative is a negative, that's why we have the minus. How much is 16 divided by 8? How much is y to the fourth divided by y squared? When we divide common bases, we subtract the exponents. If you have trouble doing that in your head, that is not a problem, write it out. Do not just say, man, Mr. Leonard does it in his head, so I have to. That's not true. Um, if you have trouble with this, all you got to do is just take this 16 y to the fourth, negative 8y squared, and then get your negative 2y squared. That's where we're getting that, okay? So please do not make the mistake of thinking all this stuff has to be in your head. It's not true. Next up, uh, we're going to do negative 8y squared divided by, how much is a negative divided by negative? 8y squared divided by 8y squared? Are these relatively prime? Yes. They have to be because that's a 1. There's nothing else that's going to go into that, so you're automatically done. You would double check that by distributing, but I'm sure you've already done that. Next one. Oh, let's find our GCF here. We, how many terms do we got? Two. What goes in? What number goes into both of those terms? What do you think? Five. five. Can write the five. Cool. Uh, what variable goes into both of those terms? Yes. Yes. That's your GCF. Yes. That means that we're going to create some parentheses because we're factoring. Let's divide. Five x to the fourth divided by five. How much is five divided by five? One. You're going to write the 1? No. It's, going to, it's there. How much is x to the 4th divided by x? Remember, this is x to the 1st, right? So when I divide by 5x to the 1st, that's 1, that's x to the 3rd, and that way our exponents are going to add up if I were to distribute. Okay, lastly, am I going to have a plus or a minus here? Can someone out there explain to me why in this case I factored out the negative, but in this case, I didn't. Why? Because if you would create a negative on the first uh, variable if you factored out a negative. Yeah, that's exactly right. If I were to do that and to make this divide by a negative, my first term would be negative. I don't want that. This is already ordered. That's perfect. We, we like that. So factor out a positive, you're good to go. Uh, now, 20x divided by, let's do this. If you just want to write it right underneath. Second term divided by GCF. 20 divided by 5. How about x divided by x? Well, that would be 4 times 1. 4 times 1 is 4. We're just going to leave it as that 4. Show of hands if you got both those correct. Did you? Are there any questions at all before we do the next one? Did you do the next one? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little weird, right? There's so much going on. Is it super hard? No. Not if you understand the GCF. It's all the same. You just got to be careful. So let's look at the GCF. I'm going to write this one out. That way, uh, that way I don't lose it. Because, man, this is it's a little bit more complicated. So first thing, let's look for, uh, oh, what do we do first? GCF. I know it's GCF. Numbers. 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 We get 8, we get 20, we got 12. GCF true, false is 2. No. Four. True. Okay. Eight? No. Why not eight? Because it won't go under 12. Or, or 20, but yeah, for sure. So four is going to be our GCF as far as the numbers are concerned. Now, do we have to do all the variables at once? No. You can no. if you're really good at it. That's cool. Uh, let's do the x's first. So I have x squared. I get x to the third. I get x. What's my GCF for my x's? X. That's the largest power of x that all three of these terms have in common. How about the y's? What about the y's? Y to the third. Yeah, I can't use y to the fourth. These guys don't have enough to go to lunch. So y to the third, that works here, that works here, that works there. 
were you able to find your GCF of 4xy to the third? Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is divide it. So our GCF goes in front. We create some parentheses. We have one, two, three terms. We're gonna end up with one, two, three terms. Um, right now, it's a, this type of a problem because we have all these variables flying around. We really don't need it specifically in order as far as, as, far as exponents go because it's not a, right now it's not that type of polynomial that we do that with. So if this is the case, if first term is positive, just factor out a positive. That's, that's basically the idea. You guys with me on that one? So we're going to go ahead and do that. What might be a good idea here? Should, if, you're, if you struggle with this, would you try to do this in your head if, if, that's, if you struggle with it? No. You probably write it out. Okay? Or you can even do this. Do the 4x, y to the third. If that helps, you can put it in all three spots. That's cool, too. How much is 8 divided by 4? 2. How much is x squared divided by x? Yes. How much is y to the fourth divided by y to the third? Wow. Cool. We subtract exponents every single time when we're dividing by common bases. Next up, plus or minus. minus? Remember that we're dividing by always the same GCF. You cannot change that. 20 divided by 4? X to the third divided by X. And lastly, Y third divided by Y third? Mm -hmm. Do I have to write anything here? No. Okay, cool. Now I'm done. 4X, Y to the third. 12 divided by 4. Three. So I'm going to have that plus 3. Well, the rest of it's kind of nice. X divided by X, 1. Y to the third divided by Y to the third. Mm -hmm. Cool. We just have that 3, and you can certainly double check that by distribution. What I want to know is how to explain up to this point how to use the GCF for factoring well enough for you. Raise your hand if I, if I have it. Feel okay about it? Okay, now. Y'all love fractions, right? Yeah. No, fractions are horrible because they make things more difficult. So one thing that happens is when you're factoring, a lot of times it's really nice to factor out the fractions because that makes the rest of your problem inside your parentheses easier. So when I've given you a really easy example to illustrate this. Um, it is harder if these are different numbers because you have to factor basically um, a little bit differently. Uh, and I'll show you one of those a little bit later. But for right now, if you have the same denominator, like in this case 9, look up here. Are there any numbers that go into 5 and 1 and 2? 1. Besides 1. So our GCF here, You said one, right? One goes in all three? One not. Factor out that, that common denominator. Do that. It'll make the inside of your parentheses much, much nicer looking. Now, the vari variable should be easy for us. Real quick, what's the GCF for variables? If we factor that, the one ninth x to the third, I'm going to do it really fast for you guys because I believe that you have this kind of down. If I factor out the one ninth, yeah, you could do 5 ninths divided by 1 ninth. It looks kind of awful, uh, to be honest with you. But remember that all that's really going to happen in this case is you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Your nines are going to be gone. So when you factor out the 1 ninth, it's really the 9 that's disappearing. You're going to have the 5 x to the fifth over x to the third. Remember, you subtract when you divide common bases. That's x squared. We're not taking any signs away. We're going to have the same signs. One ninth, when I factor out one ninth, well, that's one. We'd have x, because x to the fourth over x to the third gives us x. And lastly, that's a minus, this is a minus. Two ninths divided by one ninth. All it's going to do is remove the ninth part of that. We're going to have two. And then we have x to the third divided by x to the third. That's going to be, oh man, I lost half of you, didn't I? Uh, x to the third divided by x to the third is? It's one. Hopefully not zero. One times two, we got two. We okay with those ones? The two? If I'm basically what I'm doing, I'm removing the one ninth from each. I'm, I'm getting rid of the fraction. So if I remove the one ninth, take, take away this idea of having the fraction one ninth, I get five. Take away the idea of having the fraction one ninth and dividing that out, I get one. Take away the one ninth, I get two. Basically, just the numerators. That's all we have. Five, one, two. Hey, five, one, two.
that's the idea. Does that make sense to you? I know it's a quick, quick little trick, but uh, it's kind of nice. Question. Couldn't you um, also multiply each one by nine, and then it would cancel out the bottom denominator? No, you can't. The only time you could ever, ever, ever multiply by a number that's not one is if you have an equation. If this were equal to zero, if if it's an equation, you can do almost anything you want to. As long as you do it to both sides. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. If I don't have an equation, I don't have the idea of both sides. Does that make sense? Which means you can't just multiply whatever you want to. It'd be awesome, but you can't do that. It's a good question. You're on the right track, but you're a little bit um, you're thinking of equations rather than expressions. Thanks for bringing that up, though. Can we move on a little bit? Okay, this next part is really, really important because we're going to be using it a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Uh, a lot in the next few sections. What it involves is something called factoring by grouping. It's not, it's not really hard, but it can be a little confusing if you've never seen it before or if you've forgotten it uh, because it looks a little weird. Uh, so I'm going to introduce factoring by grouping with this one example. If you had this, so factoring by grouping. Let me let me pretend for a second that I couldn't combine those. I know right now that 8x plus 7x is 15x. We know that, yes? Mm -hmm. Not 15x squared or something silly like that, but but 15x. Now, let's say that what I want to do instead of combining these was I wanted to factor it. Could I factor it? Let's try this again. Could I factor it? Are you with me? Yeah. Um, what goes into, well, what's the GCF of, of 8x and 7x? So if I were to factor this, I'd write the x here, correct? Mm -hmm. And then inside parentheses, I would have 8 plus 7. seven. You all still with me? Mm -hmm. Now, let me, let me show you something about this. How many x's do you have here? How many x's do you have here? Why did these two x's become 1x? Because if you were to distribute it, this 1x would go to both terms, wouldn't it? Creating these two x's again. This idea right here, if you if you understand that, factor by grouping is easy. I swear, easy, okay? What happens is you have two x's here, you have one x here because we're factoring and dividing both those terms by that one single factor. It makes it look like there's only one x, but if you were to distribute it, it would go to both those terms, giving us back those two x's. Quick head nod if you're okay with the idea. All right. That's how factor of grouping, factor by grouping works. So let me take this and run with it a little bit. So again, these two x's become one x because when we factor from both terms, to undo that we would distribute to both terms. You get those two x's back again. Now, if we look down here, yeah, it looks a lot more complicated, right? Because there's lots of stuff going on. But I want you to recognize what we're doing. You, you with me? Recognize what we're doing. How many terms do you have here? Two. How many terms do you have here? Look, you have two. This is one term, and this is one term. Yeah, they're really big, fat terms. But notice how it's this and this that's separated by the plus. Do you get it? What that means is that this is one term, and this is one term. What it also means is that someone's already gone ahead and done the work for you and actually factored it. Have, you, have I lost you? Some guys are zoning out still. I'm going to lose you. If you look at this, that's multiplication, yeah? We all know that. Don't distribute this. Someone's already done the work. That's a factor of 7. That's a factor of x plus 3. That whole thing is considered a factor here. Here, that's a factor of y. That's a factor of x plus 3. So when we're looking at this, we're basically looking here and here and asking, do these things have a factor in common? A factor is a piece of, the, of a math puzzle, a piece of a term, basically. A piece of a term that's being multiplied by another number, variable, whatever, another factor. Do they have a factor in common? X plus three. Yeah, now check this out. This x plus 3 acts exactly the same as this x does. The x went out front, didn't it? 
Are you listening? The X we did went up front were factored. We're creating even more parentheses. So when I take this X and go, okay, look at it. That's a factor, isn't it? It's being multiplied. That's a factor, isn't it? It's being multiplied. I take that X, I put it out front and create parentheses. This now here is my factor that is in common. It's the greatest common factor. Take that common factor and put it out front. Now wait a minute. Does factoring destroy parentheses or create parentheses? I already had one set. I need to create another set. Factoring always creates parentheses. So if I factor this, now now check out what happened. Look, look at the, are you guys seeing the similarity between these two problems? I drew it up, so hopefully you would. If I factor out the x, the only thing that's remaining is that 8. Do you get it? Yeah. If I factor out the x, the only thing that's remaining is that 7. If I factor out my x plus 3, that's the factor they have in common. What's remaining if I factor out, divide out the x plus 3? That 7 is going to be there. You with me? Plus, plus, hey, plus, 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 plus. If I factor out the x plus 3, the greatest common factor, factor it out, what's going to be there? Because I asked you. <laughs> Little math humor, I know. Uh, I'm such a dork. Anyway. Can you see that if you were to distribute this, you get the same thing. Check it out. X plus 3, it's weird to, to see, but if you took X plus 3 and distributed, you'd have 7 times X plus 3. If you took X plus 3 and distributed, you'd have Y times X plus 3. Show of hands if you feel okay with that. What I really want to get across, do you understand why there are two X plus 3's here and only one X plus 3 here? That's what I want you to get. Do you understand why it's not squared? Is that x squared? No. no. 2x is 1x. 2x plus 3 is 1x plus 3. You're factoring it, which means if you distribute it, it's going to go to both terms. You can see it twice again. If I've explained that well enough, uh, give me a quick head nod if you understand that, that concept. We're going to practice a lot more, trust me, but I want to make sure that the, the concept is right. That way you understand this further. You had a question? Oh, I thought I saw a hand go up. Sorry. If it was x squared, it changed the problem. If what was x squared? X squared. Here? Yeah. If this were x squared and this were not x squared, you couldn't do it. If this were x squared and this were x squared, it would be no different if that would be yeah, x squared. All I'm trying to tell you is these two things have to be identical. That's all you have to know. If these are the same, you're good to go. If they're not the same, you got problems. You got problems. Okay. Tell you what, why don't we try a few more so you all get the hang of this. In fact, I'm going to have you do one right now, just on your own. I'm going to kind of lead you through this, but you're going to do all the work here. The first thing I want you to look for, how many terms do I have? Two. Big terms. Yeah, they're really big terms. Do those two terms have any factors? Remember, factors have to be contained in parentheses. Uh, do they have any factors in common? Yes. yes. What factors? Y minus one. Okay. So write that y minus 1 in front. Did you get it? How many y minus 1's should you have right now? One. Because you're factoring. It's coming out of both. Next, you're going to factor it always creates parentheses. Always. Create another set of parentheses. Did you do that already? Yes. So, you say, uh, where did I go? Two terms, one, two. Anything in common? Yeah, common factors, what we're looking for. Common factors have to be in parentheses or be multiplied. So, y minus one is the common factor. That's what we did before, right? Wrote the GCF first. Now, if I divide by y minus one, you can do it here. If I divide by y minus one, well, those would go away you would get simply x. Why? Well, because you're, you're factoring. You're dividing out that y minus 1. It's going from both terms. That's great. Uh, oh, 13 y minus 1 divided by y minus 1. What's going to happen? Minus, minus, 13, 13. Factoring always creates another set of parentheses, and that's our answer. Could you check your work? Yes. Just distribute it. That's the idea. <coughs> Okay. All right, 
We're going to end there. Uh, next time we're going to start on a little bit more advanced concepts. Um, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to give you ones that don't automatically look like this, because this right now is really simplified, okay? We're going to start figuring out how to do that. All right, so we're going to continue our journey through factory. And what we were discovering was that uh, when we have a GCF, the greatest common factor, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just one number or one variable. Uh, it, it could be an entire factor in parentheses, and that's what this factoring by grouping does for us. It says, you know what, even if you have something like this, where this is one large term and this is another term separated by that minus, even if you have these two terms, we're still looking for factors. And factors are really anything that's grouped together that's being multiplied by the remaining part of that term. So, for instance, this right here, that's a factor, and that's a factor of these one, two large terms. And factoring by grouping, I know we did this last time, but it's kind of a refresher. Factoring by grouping says, we can factor as long as those two things are exactly the same. Watch your foot, please. Uh, as long as those two terms are, factors are exactly the same. What that means is that we can, remember what factor does, right? Factoring is the opposite distribution. So where distribution destroys parentheses, factoring creates parentheses, a new set of parentheses. What the factoring says is out of these two terms, if they have a common factor, the greatest common factor, we write that common factor out front, just like we normally would. We create a new set of parentheses, just like we normally would. And then we find the remaining two terms by dividing. Remember that uh, does factoring ever get rid of terms? So if you start with 2, you're going to end with 2 inside of your parentheses. You might just have a new factor out front. So here, if I factor away my 2m minus n, remember you can even show that if you want to divide by 2, sorry, 2m plus n. If you want to divide by that, those are gone. What's remaining from that big term? Minus 1 plus n. So from this term, we get the 5x squared, y to the fourth. Quick head nod if you're okay with that so far. Is that sign going to change? No. When does that sign change if we do what? The mm -hmm. So here it's going to be minus. We do the same thing here. Now, wait a minute. If, when I factor this and I take this thing away, so, so, so to speak, does that become a zero? No. Now, remember, the smallest thing we can ever get is what? One. One. Yeah, and because that's because we're dividing. So if we divide this out, that's what factoring is, we're actually going to get a 1. We never eliminate terms. You're always going to have the same number of terms inside the parentheses as what you started with. We start with one, two big terms. We end with two terms inside that parentheses. Show of hands, feel okay with that so far. Good. So just a little refresher to get us rolling today. And now I'd like you to try one just on your own. Really similar idea. Um, really similar idea, but just with this. Go for it. So I want you to I want you to verify how many terms are there first. Just look at the number of terms that you have. Remember, terms are those big pieces separated by pluses and or minuses. Then what I want you to look for inside those terms, do they share a common factor? If they do, factor that factor out. So put that in the front around parentheses, create a new set of parentheses, and then divide to figure out what those new terms are going to be. Okay, so let's go for it. How many terms do we have here? Two. Yeah, two big terms are separated by that minus sign. Do we have a common factor? Yes. yes. What is the common factor? A plus B. That's right. It's all contained in the parentheses. That's what we would have to have happen. Otherwise, we would have several terms here if those parentheses weren't there. Here, factor, factor in these two terms. We write out our common factor first. Then we create a new set of parentheses because we're factoring. And if we were to divide this away, what happens when we divide out the a plus b? What do we get left? Minus, minus, minus doesn't change. What do we get here again? One. Yep, we're dividing this. So a plus b divided by a plus b gives us our 1, and we're done. Show of hands if you, if you got that one by yourself. That's really good. Now we're going to make the jump. Uh, right here, this has basically been kind of done for you. The first step has been done for you. You don't know it yet because we haven't talked about factor by grouping in its whole. But here, 
Someone's factored this so you have that, that factor here and that factor here. What I'm talking about are examples that look like, like the following. Let's look at that example together. The first thing I want you to notice is the number of terms that we have. How many terms do we have here? Four. Yeah, there's four terms. That's different than before, right? Over here we had, we had two terms. Here we got, we got four terms. Now, I don't want you to ever miss this, ever. First thing you do whenever you're factoring, you always, always look for a GCF if there is one. Always, I don't care what you're doing, you always look for that. Is that clear? No matter what other factoring I teach you about, always look for the GCF. So, we're going to look for it. Does this have a GCF? Remember, you've got to consider all four of these terms. Does it have a GCF? No. Mm -hmm. No. But that's what we check for first. Now, if it had a GCF, great, you'd factor it out. If it doesn't, we've got to consider something else, something else to do. In this class, if there's four terms and you're asked to factor, practically the only thing we can do with that is try to factor by grouping. So here's how you factor by grouping. You organize these terms so that the first two terms have a common factor and the last two terms have a common factor. What that means is that sometimes, I'll show you this right now, If these things, what was that, a 2x, mm -hmm. not 3y, is that what I gave you? Yeah. yeah. If the th these things, are, are you sure it was a 2x? That was, right? Yes. 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 If these things are out of order, sometimes it won't make a difference, and sometimes it will make a difference. You might have to rearrange them. In this case, um, it, doesn't it doesn't make a difference. In some cases, it will make a difference. You would have to arrange them certain, certain ways. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So, for us, either way you do in this case, we're going to group these so that the first two terms have a common factor and the last two terms have a common factor. Which way did you guys write it down? This way or the last way? Last way. Last way. I just wanted to mention that sometimes you might have to look at, at organizing them in a certain pattern. Uh, group the first two terms and the last two terms. Basically what you're doing is you're trying to go from our four terms like this to our two large terms like these examples where you have a common factor. That's the idea. If it doesn't work the first time, reorganize your terms and maybe it'll work the second time. So for us, uh, look at our first two terms. Is there a greatest common factor here? Yes. Fact the x out. Now, I'm going to start going a little quicker on our factory because we talked so much about it, okay? So here, yeah, if we factor out the x, we have y plus 2. Can you verify that for me? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus sign, plus sign. It's not going to change. Now, does these two terms have a common factor? 3. Factor out the 3, we get y plus 2. If it's factorable, it will work out so that these two factors are exactly the same. If that happens, then you continue. If it doesn't happen, you try to reorganize your terms, or it's not factorable. Quick hit note if you're okay with that so far. What I want to know is, are you okay getting the x factored out and getting the 3 factored out? Show of hands if you are. Okay, very good. Now, well, wait a minute. That looks exactly like what we did over here, doesn't it? This was it's exactly the same thing. Here's one big term, term, another big term. We had a common factor. We're just going to divide out or factor that out. What happens to my y plus 2? What do I do with it? Yep. So we have y plus 2. I have parentheses. What's the next step that I'm going to do? X plus 3. Just write x plus 3? Oh, okay. factoring creates a new set of parentheses. So create another set of parentheses. If I factor away the y plus 2, I can divide it. If I factor away the y plus 2, I'm getting x. If I factor away the y plus 2, I'm getting plus and 3. I want to show if you feel okay with, with that one. Now, could you check your work? Yes. If you distribute this, here's your y times x, or x times y is the same thing. Here's your 
3y by FOIL. Here's your 2x right there. Here's your plus 6. It has to work so if you've done it right. That's the idea behind factor by grouping. Basically, we've done this like many, like baby steps at a time. I showed you how to factor a GCF. I showed you how to factor with these awkward looking factors. Now we're just putting that idea together. Let's try a few more examples to really get this uh, solidified and then, then we're going to move on. So for right now, I want you to try one on your own. I want you to look at <clears throat> at this. Here's the thought process for going through these. The first thing you do, you look at all your terms and you see if you have a GCF. Because if you do, you need to factor that out first. So factor a GCF if you have one for all the terms. If you don't have a GCF, look at the number of terms that you have. If you have four terms, the only thing that we can really do here is factor by grouping. So you're grouping the first two, factoring it. Grouping the last two, factoring it. And then you're looking for that common factor. So go ahead and try to do that problem for me if you would. <clears throat> Okay, so, uh, first thing, left side people, does this have a GCF for all four terms? What do you think? Yeah. No. Yes? Yes. What goes into all four of them? Oh, no, not for all four of them. Okay, so that's the first thing we check for is for all four of them, does it have a GCF? Because you've got to do that first. If it doesn't, then we start looking at other, other options. Does that make sense to you? Don't ever discount the GCF. It's really important uh, to look for all four of them at once. And then if it doesn't have one, then we start breaking this up. Does the first two terms does the first two terms have a GCF there? Yes. What is it? X. If we factor out the x, we divide it away, we get y. Remember, factor in increase parentheses. Divide out the x, we get four. Good to go. Keep the plus. Here we have another factor that these two have in common. We have a seven, and if we factor that out, we get a y plus four. We could double check our work if we wanted to, but that's the only way to factor these term these two terms, and the only way to factor these two terms. Quick head note if you got that far on your own. At this point, this is really nice. Now we've changed four terms into two big terms. And then we continue. We look for a common factor within those two terms. So it's kind of doing like these two finding common factors and then another two terms finding common factors. Question? There's two ways to do it. If you do the xy plus 7y, it does the same thing. It does the same thing. That's right. Sometimes that's going to work. Uh, it does here. And you can see that 2 times 3 equals 6. So no matter what way I have this organized, 4 times 7 gives you 28. It's going to work for you. Sometimes it won't. So, if we continue to factor, can we continue to factor? Yeah. Yes. How do you know? Because it has common <coughs> What if this was different than that? Would you be able to continue? Mm -hmm. no, yeah. So, if that's a plus and that's a minus, would you be able to do it? Yeah. No. That's a problem. So, here we factor out the y plus 4. If we factor out the y plus 4 from this large term, what's remaining? If we factor out the y plus 4 from this large term, what's remaining? Plus 7. Good. I like the, how you say the plus 7. Right. Could you check your work? Yes. I'm not going to do it, but you just foil that out. It's got to be exactly the same as what you started with. Now, let's try a couple more. I want to really make this stick in your head here. Let's do... Uh, let's do this one. Question, just my right side people over here. Question, how many terms do I have? And in those terms, in all four terms, is there a greatest common factor besides one for all those four terms? Anything going to all four of them besides one? Okay, we check four first, but no, not in this case. So now that we have these four terms, what's the next logical step? If we don't have a GCF, what should we be trying if we have four terms? What should we try? Can you combine those? Are they like terms? Okay, no. So I'm trying to factor here. If I don't have a greatest common factor and I have four terms, the only thing we can do in this class is factor by grouping. So two terms, GCF or some, some very specific types of factor I'm going to tell you later. Three terms, we'll talk about that in maybe about 10 minutes. 
Okay, four terms, GCF, but then grouping. It's all about factor by grouping. Because if you don't, if you don't have the GCF, the only thing that we can do is factor by grouping. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Uh, with four terms, what's the only type of factoring that we do in this class? Grouping. Yep, I want you to try grouping. So we're going to group the first two, and we're going to group the last two. Hey, uh, tell me something, left side people. What goes into both 3a squared and 4ab? What's the, the a. GCF there? A. a. you're right. And when we factor that out, 3a squared, when I divide out 1a, what do I get? 3a plus 4a. Remember, I know I'm going faster right now. You can always write this out. Don't be afraid to do this and say, oh, he's factoring out the a. So 3a squared divided by a gives him 3a. That's how we're getting that. Do you remember that from last time? Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to write that out. Okay, let's continue. How about 4ab when I divide out that a? What do I get? 4a. And I'm going to get a plus between there. Quick head note if you're okay with, with that one. Now this is, a little, this is a little weird though. Wait a minute. Over here. Uh, we have 3a plus 4b. 3a plus 4. What goes into both 3a and 4b? One. Nothing. Nothing besides? One. If you have two terms which are automatically relatively primed, do you remember that word? Mm -hmm. We're using it a little loosely because we have variables here, but the idea is the same. Where these two terms have only the factor 1, when that's the case, write down the 1. Force it to factor by 1. I, I promise it will help you a little bit. So if we write down the 1 and factor this, we still have 3a plus 4b. I want you to verify that for me that that's still the same. Is that okay with you? For some of you, if you don't like the one, that's fine. If it does not factor, you can also just put parentheses around it. Just like that. The reason it, that why we do the one is because sometimes people have people struggle with this. If you if you notice this, that problem is exactly the same as this problem, except instead of a minus, you get a plus. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So some people struggle that, well, why doesn't that just appear, disappear? Why is that a why is that a one? Well, you can always put a one out front. So if you divide by this, you automatically get one. For some people, this really helps to say the only thing that divides into these is one. That way, when I factor out my greatest common factor here and here, we don't forget that we create parentheses and we'll have an A and we'll have that one. Quick show of hands if you, if you feel okay with that one. Do you need to put the one there? No. Not really. Um, you can if you want to. I'm not going to be concerned about it. It's just kind of a little helpful hint so you don't forget that it doesn't go to nothing, okay? Because a lot of people confuse factoring with I'm completely getting rid of that. That's not what's happening. We're dividing here. Make sense? Okay. Let's try just uh, just one more together. I'm going to give you a couple do on your own and then uh, that will be about done with this section. I'd like you guys to help me with this one. I want you to tell me what I, I know how to do this stuff. I want to make sure you know how to do it. So tell me what my first step should be. When I factor, no matter what, all the time with factoring, I'm always checking for what first? Yes. Very good. And how many terms does this have? Four. Is there a GCF besides one that goes into all four of these terms? No. Okay, so but we check first. Never ignore that. Now, we have four terms. Okay, hey, if there's no GCF in four terms, and you can't combine them, what do we use to factor it? Grouping. Grouping, that's right. Let's group them. We group the first two. We group the last two. Okay, we're on a roll. Now what do we do? After I've grouped the first two and the last two, what's my next step? Factor. Factor what? Each. Okay, so we're going to look at the first two terms and see if we can find a GCF just with those two terms. And then the last two terms and do the same exact thing. So. Uh, first two terms, can you find me something that goes into just these two terms? Why? Because I asked you. <laughs> oh, I used that joke already, didn't I? Yeah. Dang it. Oh, I'm unoriginal now. <laughs> 
Factoring creates parentheses. What's remaining when I fact? Remember, factoring just means divide. Okay, we're just dividing. 2x plus 5. 2x. Okay, I like the 2x. What's the rest of it? 5y. 5y. Very good. If I factor out or divide 1y from this y squared, I get 1y left over. Quick head nod if you're okay with it so far. Now, the next part of this is really important. This is where a lot of students make mistakes, okay? It's all about negatives. Uh, whenever you have a minus that is separating your two groupings, this factor by grouping, whenever you have a minus, what this is going to do is going to force you to factor out a negative. You have no other choice. So what that means, you write down the minus, because it's a minus. You can't change that. What number goes into both 4x and minus 10, or 10? 4x and 10y. So because that's a minus, it is going to force you to factor out not just 2, but negative 2. What that's going to do, it's going to change your signs. So do you, do you guys see what I'm talking about, the negative 2 up there? We always know that numbers go with the sign right in front of them. So right here, when we're factoring out 2, not really. We're factoring out negative 2 because of that minus. So when you do this, when you find out your terms, Please don't just divide by 2. You need to divide by, if that's a negative, divide by negative 2. Not your head if you're understood. Okay, so let's do it. What's, uh, what's negative 4x? Remember, we always go with the sign in front. What's negative 4x divided by negative 2? 2x. Positive 2x, isn't it? Okay, what's negative 10y divided by negative 2? Positive 5y. Aha. Do you know what, mis I bet you know. I bet you know what most people are going to do here if they're going to make a mistake. What's going to be there? Yes. Mr. Leonard's method don't work with crap, man. That's why I don't like this. Because it's, it, it's going to be different. If you mess up that negative, can you continue with this problem right now? That's a problem. So it's really imperative that you understand that if there's a minus right here separating your two groupings, it is forcing you to factor out a negative. All that you need to recognize is, hey, minus, both these signs are going to change. That will be positive. That sign will change plus, just like that. And what that's going to do is make this at least doable for you. Show of hands if you understand the, the idea there. It might take some practice to get used to the idea of that minus means factor out a negative every time. If it's a plus, don't worry about it. Just factor out the positive. It's all good. So now that we have this, oh man, we got one big term, we got two big terms. Do you see a common factor in there? Yes. Let's write our common factor first. If we remove that common factor by division, i.e. we're factoring, if we remove it, we have a y. If we remove it, we have a minus 2, and we're completely factored, and that's nice. What I'd like you to do right now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you try two of them, okay? Uh, I'll be walking around. If you need help, now would be the time to ask. So let's put one right here. So we're looking at the total number of terms and figuring out if we have a GCF. If we do, awesome, factor it. If we don't have that, then we count the number of terms. And if there's four of them, we have to factor by grouping right now.
too. What you guys can't figure that out? Come on. <laughs> well, it's going to be easier. That's next, right? I mean, I tested you. You passed. Congratulations. <laughs> If you had done that problem, then you wouldn't be able to go any further, right? In okay. factoring by grouping would have failed. So it's good that we see that. Uh, but you try. You try with four terms. And if that happens, you go, well, I just can't factor it. That can happen to you. OK, so I'm assuming that since you're working on that one, that you guys finished up this one. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go through it a little bit quickly, since we should have this idea pretty much down at this point. So. We look for greatest common factor, they go, oh, X is here, Y is here, uh, nothing for all three of them. So I'm going to factor by grouping because I have four terms. I look here, I see a factor of Y. That's the GCF for these two terms. Factor means create parentheses. It means divide out that greatest common factor. So we get our 2X, we get our plus 3Y. We never lose a term. We always have the same number of terms here. That minus is going to force me to factor out a negative something. Now, the only number that goes into both these two terms is what? One. That's right. I can put the one if I want to. I don't have to put the one. But what I do have to do is somehow make parentheses. Now, if you're going to factor out negative one, basically, I like putting the one because it reminds me that I'm going to have something down here, not just nothing. So if I factor out the negative one, all that's going to do is change this sign to a positive 2x and change this sign to a plus 3y. And you can verify that really quick. If I take my negative 1 and multiply, negative 2x, negative 1 and multiply, minus 3y. So we know we have it right. Now we look at it, hey, two large terms, a common factor. We write our common factor first. We create some parentheses. If we remove by division, factoring. If we factor this out, we have a y from that term. If we factor this out, we have a minus 1, and that's the correct factorization. Did you guys get that one? Same thing happens over here. It's just a little bit different because we haven't seen this larger variable here. No GCF, but we do have a larger greatest common factor than we normally have. What goes into both those terms? X squared. X squared. you got to factor out the x squared. You have to do the greatest common factor. Not just x, but you have to do the greatest common factor. It's important for you guys to see that. So if we factor out that x squared, we actually get a 7x by division. x cubed divided by x squared is x plus 5x squared divided by x squared is 5. If you don't do that, it's going to look like these things are different. Okay? You've got to have the GCF. Now, next one. This is one of those cases where only 1 goes into 7x and 5. So at this point, you can put plus and just put parentheses there. 7x plus 5 if you want to. Though, because only 1 goes into it, if that looks fine to you, do that. Uh, if you think, if you want to do like I do, you go, well, I want the 1 there. That way, when I factor this, it reminds me that I have an x squared, O, oh, and I have a plus 1, and I don't lose any of those factors. Have I explained this well enough for you all to understand it? Okay, cool. I'm going to give you two cases where uh, this might throw you for, for a loop a little bit uh, if you're not really careful. I'll show you how to deal with those, okay? So first one. Okay, real quick though, real quick. So, how many terms? Four. Is there a GCF on these four terms? Yeah. No, because some have X's, some have Y's, some have numbers, but nothing goes into all four of those terms. So, if we have four terms and I'm asking you to factor, what do we need to use? Okay, so check this out. If we group this, what goes in these two terms? One. What goes in these two terms? One. Do you understand that if I factor out one from both sets of those terms, it's not going to do anything? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so this is, a, this is one of those cases where one way doesn't work, but another way might. So if you run ac across this and go, well, wait a minute, there's four terms. Nothing goes into those two terms besides one. Nothing goes into those two terms besides one. This is one of those times where you'd want to try to reorganize it. So usually, usually, it's just a matter of flipping those two inside terms. Sometimes it's a little more complicated, but usually, it's just, bring, just remember this, please remember this. Your terms have to go with the sign that's in front of them. So if I'm going to interchange this, is it minus x or plus x? Plus x. And then minus 4, and then minus 12y. 
and by interchanging them, sometimes we match up factors better. I didn't see that part where you get it. I get it. Do you see that nothing factors here? Mm -hmm. And nothing factors here, right? Okay. If we interchange the terms, x goes here, minus 4 goes here, sometimes we're going to cheat, not cheat, uh, use this to our advantage, and then we get some, some terms that do have common factors. So let's look at it, at it again. Uh, do these two terms have a common factor now? And if we factor out the x, we get 3y, and we get plus 1. With me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, next up. When I factor out the 4, when I factor out the 4, the first term is going to be 1. Next term, this one. This three one. Plus, plus Why three. is it going to be plus? That's good. This is important for you to see, okay? If that's a minus, it means you're not just going to be factoring out 4. You have to factor out negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. Neg we think about it like negative 12. Negative 12y divided by negative 4 is positive or plus 3y. Quick head if you're okay with it so far. Now, next question. Do we have in these two large terms a common factor? Yes. yes. How, wait a minute. That's 3y plus 1. It's 1 plus 3y. Wait a minute. Addition is commutative, which means that we can switch them around and make no difference. So when you come across this, yeah, that's the same. What if that was a minus? That would not be the same because those are not commute subtractions, not commutative. So be careful on this. But yeah, you can switch those around with no problem. So we write our common factor first, 3y plus 1. We're going to think about like 3y plus 1. And then we create a new set of parentheses and factor out for our x minus 4. So far, so good on that one? Okay, cool. Okay, last one before we move on to a different technique here. By the way, the reason why, if you haven't noticed, it's taken us a long time to go over this. The reason why we cover GCF to this extent and grouping to this extent is because you use GCF for all factoring. It's always going to be there. And then we also use factoring by grouping in one of our techniques later on. And so we're, we're always kind of relying on these two, two things. Question? Uh, you mentioned like terms earlier. Will we ever encounter like terms while factoring? You're, it's going to be assumed that when you get something to factor, it's already been combined like terms. So like in our problems, we're always combining like terms first and then we're factoring. Okay. okay. So yeah, you look for that. Uh, so when I say four terms, it's kind of implied that they're four non-like terms. Uh, wow. Okay. Intimidating a little bit? I don't know. Not if you know, if you know what you're doing, it, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, if I gave this to you the first day in class, it said factor it. we go, oh, crap. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to do that one. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at this together. What is the first thing that you check for all the time, without fail, when I ask you to factor anything? GCF. How many terms are there? Does this have a GCF with it? Please do that first. Factor the GCF first. And here's, listen, I'm not going to show you the other way because frankly I don't have the time to show you a mistake, okay? But here's the mistake. The mistake would be, and I know you're also working on it right now, but just focus on this for a second, okay? A lot of people will skip this on a test and cause themselves more time. You can still get the right answer, but a lot of people won't take the time to do it. Yeah, here's what would happen. If you factor by grouping right now, What's going to happen is that within one of those factors, you're still going to have a common factor, which you need to take out later. So take out the GCF now, and it saves you time later. It saves you a mistake, potentially, later. Make sense? We're always doing the GCF first. Uh, what is the greatest common factor in this example? Five. So if we factor out the 5, not only does it make all these terms smaller, but it, allow, it makes it so that later on we won't have to refactor again. We don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some brackets. Large brackets. I'm going to factor out the 5. So basically just divide by 5. I want to know if you're okay with that so far. Okay, next up. Is it true that this has no greatest common factor? Yes. We've already done it. So it can't have another greatest common factor. We've already done that. 
How many terms do we have still? Four. Four. Factory never destroys terms. So now we can go ahead and do our factory by grouping. So we look here and we look here. Just keep that five floating out front. Don't, don't lose it, but you really don't have to work with it right now. So if we factor, let's look at the first two. Is there anything that goes into both 3xy and 3yz? We're looking for the GCF for just these two terms because we're grouping right now. 3,5. And if we factor out the 3y, number divided by 3y, what's remaining for this term? Say what? Thanks. X plus, X plus, uh, yeah, like in the 3y, we're factoring that away. What is it? X plus Z. Perfect. Can you verify that for me real quick, people, that we, uh, we factor the 3y, we get X plus Z. Yes, no? Yeah. We've already taken care of the 5, so we don't need to worry about that. Now, next one. Is there anything that goes into both X, Z, and minus Z squared? Z. Z. Oh, okay, so that minus, that really drops down for us and it says if you have z that goes into both these, it's forcing you to factor a negative z. So if we're forced to factor a negative z, let's do that together, uh, everybody together. What's going to remain here after we factor out a negative z? Positive x. Uh, like I said, positive x, that's great. And somebody else who didn't speak just now, if we have a negative z and we're factoring out a minus z or a negative z, what goes here? <laughs> Why does the sign change, please? Because you pulled out a negative you factor with a negative. That's right. Negative divided by negative is positive. We're factoring out that negative. Did it work? Can you see that we made the right move here? This is great. We have two large terms. We've got a common factor. We're going to keep the 5, but it doesn't really do much. We're going to put a bracket. We're going to factor this x plus z and put it first. Factoring always creates another set of parentheses. If we factor away the x plus z, we get 3y. If we factor away the x plus z, we get minus z. And we're good to go. I need to show of hands if you feel okay with, with that one. Okay, what happens if you don't do the GCF is down here, depending on which order these are in, one of these two large factors, like here or here, will still have a common factor. And you would have to factor that out anyway. Does that make sense? One or maybe both in some cases. But taking care of the GCF first, make sure that when you get down to this point, you're actually done and you don't have to keep rechecking. So we always check GCF first because it makes our lives easier. So if I explain factoring by grouping, well enough for you. That actually takes care of section 6.1. I know it's been a long ordeal, but we're going to jump right into section 6.2 right now and talk about how to factor when there's not necessarily GCF, but also when there's not four terms. So we're going to talk about how to factor when we have trinomials. Basically, a tri meaning three, nominal meaning terms. So when we have three term polynomials, 